Okay, in this problem here, take a moment to read it and get a sense of it. I'll, and then I'll read it together so we can see what's going on. So one of Amazon's customer service platforms is to have a customer service agent make a phone call to their customers to help solve service problems. Amazon.de believes the number of phone calls follows a Poisson distribution with a mean of 2.3 calls every minute. To reduce the need for people operators, Amazon.de introduces an online chat service that uses AI to answer most queries. In order to test whether this online chat service has reduced the number of phone calls over a randomly selected hour, the number of phone calls are counted. So, uh, we want to make uh, a alternative and null hypothesis, and we're also going to write down the distribution of x under this hypothesis. Well, I know that this is going to be a Poisson scenario because it tells us. And I know x is going to be belong to Poisson, and it's 2.3 calls every minute, and I'm going to be looking at uh, over, an, over an hour. I'm going to take the 2.3 and times it by 60. So in an hour, I would expect to have 138 phone calls happening. So the alternative null hypothesis, well, it, is going to be there is no reduction in the phone calls, meaning we have 138 calls per hour. And the alternative is there is a reduction in phone calls, meaning there's less than 138 calls per hour. Okay, so um, here's our distribution. We want to find the critical region for the test at the 5% level. So again, this is a discrete distribution, so you have to consider what's going on here. As I have my distribution, I have, <coughs> excuse me, zero. I could have zero phone calls. That's possible. I could also have 138 phone calls and every single combination in between. And so I'm looking to find the critical region at this level, the 5%. And so I'm looking to find some kind of a boundary where everything on this side is 5% because it's a less than scenario. So if I go to my calculator, I'm going to go to y equals, and I've already put Poisson CDF into my calculator with 138 as I mean and x. And if I go to my table, I can start at zero, and look, these values are really super, super duper small, adding up. It will take me a long time to get all the way to 138. So I can, if I go to my table set, which is above a window, if I go second table set, I'm gonna start, let's go to 100. Okay, and then I'll go back to my table and see where I am. So at 100, it's still really super small. So now, all these values are starting to accumulate, and here I see it at 118, 119, 120, 117. This is my transition zone here. And so I know that here, let's say, here is 117, 118, 119, and 120. Okay, and I know that up to and including 117, I have the value of 3.8%, uh, okay? This is 3.8%. If I have a 118, I have 4.6%. So if this is my border, I would have on this side 4.6%. If I have 119, if I would put the border here, this would have 0 0.55. So in here, 5% exists. This is where the 5% exists. Between these two values is the 5%, in the middle of 119. So I'm going to go more extreme, and because it's less than, on this side is more extreme. Okay, so this is where I'm going to make my boundary. So my critical region is x is less than or equal to 118 phone calls. So if I get 118 phone calls, then I will reject the null hypothesis and say there's been a reduction in phone calls. If this test is adopted, state the actual level of significance. Well, I want the value of x less than or equal to 118. So to find this, I'm going to find the probability that x is less than or equal to 118, which I can see from my table is 0 0.0458. 
this is the level of actual significance for this particular test. Okay, so now, if the total number of phone calls received over the one hour period is 119, is there evidence that the number of phone calls has been reduced? So if x equals 119, well, at that point, what we can say is I know if this is true, it is outside the critical region. It is outside critical region. Therefore, I fail to reject, to reject H naught, and say no reduction, which is, there is no reduction in phone calls, in phone calls for Amazon, in phone. So if I actually want to find the p-value, and if I got 19, well, I am looking at including 19. I'm looking for the probability of all of those. Because 119 is part of my, and that is more extreme. The p-value is more extreme. So if I was doing the normal curve, right, I would consider my normal, and here it'd be 119. I would want this value here to be, to be my p-value, because I know that this scenario is talking about less than 118 values. This is a less than scenario, so that means I'm going to be on this side of it. So I want 119 and more so this way. And so the p-value is going to be the probability that x is less than or equal to 119. And if I look at my, gra my scenario here, this here is actually Poisson distribution cumulative of 138. So when I think about this, this is the value I'm looking for is equal to 0 0.0551 is the p-value. And so therefore, since the p-value p-value is bigger than alpha, we reject the null hypothesis again. So it is saying the same thing as what this one here said, but just from a different perspective than what we, uh, um, we got, just not using critical region, but using the idea of a p-value instead. So in doing it, it's really careful, it's really important that you recognize finding this boundary and then being careful about which probabilities you actually want to find.